All right, um, we all start. Hello, my name is Daniel Thao. I'm also known as Paradigm to some people in the free open source software community. Um, I've been using Linux since about 2004, and I all that experience I've built up has culminated into a project I'm here to talk to you today uh, called Bedrock Linux. Before we begin, I'd like to apologize. I'm, I'm finding a cough. If I step away from the mic uh, and cough, please excuse me. Uh, additionally, while reviewing the slides, I came to the conclusion it might be better to put uh, take my time on a few of them and show more demos than I originally planned. So I'm probably not going to get to all of the slides. If you want to see um, the slides that you're missing, all the slides are on uh, the Bedrock Linux website. and should, should be on the first page. Um, so when I first started using Linux, at this point you can't just download and install Linux. Apparently it comes in distributions and you have to pick one. Um, I'm sure if you're sitting here, you've probably gone through that process, but I feel it would be beneficial to explain exactly uh, how I went about it to figure out how I got to where I am today. So um, I, broke the, I forget, most distros come in different niches. Um, for example, Debian and the Red Hat Enterprise Linux clones are all very, very stable, very reliable. Um, not only are they reliable, they don't change. You set it up and you can just leave it running. You don't have to worry about learning anything new once, once you're familiar with it uh, for years and years. I really like that. Uh, I, I don't have time always to, uh, to play with my machine. Like I've been preparing for a really big talk I have scheduled for right now. Um, I, I could not deal with a broken computer. Um, so I like that. However, that comes at the expense of them being out of date. You, so if there's some new toy that comes out or some new hardware you want to play with, um, those distros are probably will not have support immediately. So you can go you know, the other extreme. You can go to something like uh, Arch Linux, Debian SID, uh, which will be cutting edge. Any new toy that comes out, you'll have them very, very quickly. However, they're going to be a little bit less reliable. Uh, moreover, they're, they're changing. You have to keep up to date. Things like the uh, Arch Linux user move, uh, you, had to, you had to read that and follow those instructions. I don't always have the patience for that um, if I'm, I'm busy with other things. So that's another pro and con. Um, if you want something really customizable, like uh, I don't want Dbus in my Firefox. I, every major distro does that. Uh, I personally don't want to. With Gentoo, I can just set a user flag saying I don't want that, and then I don't have to worry about it anymore. I really like that. Uh, you, can come as, you can compile it yourself on any distro, but I like Portage just taking care of it for me all the time. If you want something minimal, you can do Tiny Core, Slide Has, those are options. Uh, user friendly, there's a number of distros I think Ubuntu and Mint are probably the main ones right now. If you want something portable, you can have Slax, uh, Nopix, and even a number of those. And literally hundreds of other distros, each of which have their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, so I was thinking about which one do I want. You know, you can make lists of pros and cons and do your weighting and then do all the calculations. But, uh, the way, you know, I'm sure you've, you've all made your choices, you, you know what you want, but I, uh, I didn't like anything because I want everything. I want everything on that list, I want it. So uh, since there's no distro that did that, I made my own um, called Bedrock Linux. And it does those things. Uh, it is a uh, rock solid stable base from something like Debian or Red Hat Enterprise uh, Linux. If I want cutting edge packages from uh, Arch or Arch's AUR, I have that as well. If I want to use Portage to automatically compile stuff with specific settings, it'll do that. If I want Unity, Cinnamon, whatever your favorite distro is and its favorite feature that it sells out on you, there's a good chance Bedrock will do that. The main exception is uh, the whole user-friendly thing. I don't have that quite down yet. Um, <laughs> but barring that, if, if there's some specific thing or some specific distro you want, but you also want other things that isn't available in that distro, Bedrock Linux may very well uh, suit you. Um, Notably that I'm not dual booting between different distros. I want all these things at the same exact time. Uh, I want them to work transparently. I don't, I don't want to have to think about which distro am I doing what in. Uh, I don't want overhead with things like virtualization. I, I, just, I want everything that I can possibly have. So that might be enough um, for some people, but I may as well just keep going and do stuff that no other distro can do. Um, for example, if you're doing a distro upgrade, like Debian from going to five to six, you can do that live with almost no downtime. Um, you can leave your, if you have a server, you can leave Apache running while you're doing the upgrades. Uh, do all the configuration, you don't have to take the machine down. Um, and then once everything's ready, you just take down Apache and then restart it, and then you have the updated distro. That could break things. Um, I've had some issues uh, with distro upgrades breaking things. If that happens, I can just fall back to the old release. Now, doing, if you're using uh, virtual machines, you can do snapshots and, and do something similar to that. What you cannot do with uh, most other distros that you can do here is pick and choose different parts. So uh, if I do the distro upgrade and one thing breaks, and only that one thing, and I want to fall back with just that one thing, I can do that with Bedrock. Everything else will be the new one, except for that feature. 
Um, in fact, it's not just from a distro upgrade breaking things. If anything breaks for any reason, usually my fault, I don't have to worry about it because I can just get that feature from some other distro that I haven't broken yet. Um, or if something doesn't work out of the box, and it's not my fault. Uh, it's, again, it's a non-issue. Packages feel disposable. Uh, just the level of stress from using Bedrock Linux when things break, I don't, I don't care. Because it, it, they're not broken. I just get it from somewhere else. Um, so it's nice to talk about the theory, but I figure I should give you some real world examples of where I actually did this and this it became uh, handy. So I said earlier, I'm a student at the Ohio State University. Uh, every year, OSU uh, lets all the various clubs in the university set up booths so that new students come around and look at the, the various club options and see what they want to do. So I was there for the open source club, and unlike a lot of the other clubs there, you can't just show a laptop, you know, and explain the difference between new and BS, uh, you know, the GPL and BSD. It's not interesting. It's not going to grab people's attention. I want something shiny. So uh, comp is shiny. I wanted to show off comp is. Like, the spinning cube is cool. Like, that That will get people's attention, and hopefully from there I can start explaining what Linux is. Um, so, however, I ran into some issues. Um, this laptop is newer than the newer version of Debian. And while I can do some 2D stuff, uh, 3D acceleration doesn't work. I couldn't do things like GLX gears, so I couldn't do comp is with Debian. Um, going to the other extreme with Arch, Arch's comp is was not working for me. I don't know why. It could be my fault. Uh, I didn't have the time, though, to figure it out, because I, I, this idea came to me while I was at the, uh, at the booth and people walking around. I didn't really have time to, to mess with it instead of talking with people, uh, potential new members for the club. So uh, literally at the time, the person to my left was running Debian, and the person to my right was running uh, Arch. And neither of them had comp was working either, so it wasn't just me. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they're, they're here. Uh, so using Bedrock, I managed to do something extremely unique. Uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, this is probably the single best example. You cannot do this with any, anything else I'm familiar with. I just took X11 from Arch and comp is from Debian. Because I know those individual part works. And then the whole thing worked. And I, and I had comp is. That spinning cube I was showing you was running uh, from Debian's comp is, but my X11 is from, I think, Ubuntu at the moment. But it, it could be Arch or any other distro that supports it. Uh, you can't do that with virtual machines. Uh, the 3D acceleration stuff has some serious issues there. You can't do that dual booting, obviously. Those other options aren't available. Bedrock uh, is one of the very few ways you can go about doing something like this. Um, so uh, I'm a big fan of Debian, if you haven't noticed yet. When Debian 6 came out at the Open Source Club, we had a bit of a, a launch party for it. And we were all sitting there waiting for it to be officially released. And then we downloaded it, put on on disks and USB drives and, and installed it. Um, so I did the thing earlier I mentioned where you can do an update live without having to restart your system um, without taking anything down. And I realized that my touchpad stopped working. And it wasn't just me. Someone else was there with a, a roughly similar machine also had his touchpad stop working. Um, so we, we went debugging it, but while we were debugging it, I just fell back to the older X11 that I knew worked with my touchpad. And uh, it was a lot easier to, to try to find a fix while I have a working touchpad. Um, other people there don't, don't really have that luxury when they're on different distros because the touchpad is broken for them after they did the update. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm at OSU, I'm studying electrical engineering. I do a lot of mathematics, so I need a, a software uh, math app to help me. I really like Sage Mathematics. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. Unlike things like uh, MATLAB, Mathematica, it does everything with Python, which is a really good language for, for exactly like this. Uh, the syntax is great. One major issue with Sage is uh, packaging It's really awkward. Uh, a number of distros, like uh, Debian and Ubuntu, tried to get it in the repos, but for whatever reason, they had some serious trouble. Arch Linux is the only one I know of that actually has it in the repo. Um, if you want some other distro, you can download a pre-made package, install it manually, or compile it yourself. But I, I wanted to keep up to date. I, I just want to run one command to update my, my system, and I want uh, Arch to come with it, or uh, Sage to come with it. And using, uh, using Bedrock, I can do that. I can just get that from Arch. So for example, um, as the issue says, I'm, I'm in Debian. Uh, so it looks like I'm Debian. However, I can do this. Uh, nope. uh, there's supposed to be a grep in there. <laughs> there we go. So I, in addition to Debian's package managers, I also have Pac-Man. And I can just get it through Arch's repo and have Sage. And you know, it's really where Sage works. So I can do 1 plus 1. Um, I have to do this with Camelcon here. Uh, this is really neat. Mathematical function that makes the Batman logo. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. Some of my homework. Um, <laughs> C 
so yeah, that's, that's really nice that I can do that. that I just download and keep it up to date from Arch, despite the fact that much of my system is Debian based. Um, no, no virtual machines get that working. No, no dual bidding between them. It just, it just works. Uh, there's a game called Force Leashed that came out. Um, I think it's open source. However, the download I got from Ubuntu did not come with the source code. Uh, so when I try to run it, it gives me an error about glibc. Uh, was it libc6, I think. And you'll see, the, yeah, the, the glibc I have is too old from Debian. So if you're on Debian, you'd have to compile it yourself. You, you can't just run it. Um, but I'm, I'm lazy. I don't want to compile it myself. I don't want to find the source code. I just want to run it. So uh, I think right now the most popular distro is still Ubuntu. I figure if it's going to be pre-compiled against anything, it's probably Ubuntu. So I can just switch to Ubuntu's shell and then run it, and then it works. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really nice. Uh, so I figure I should explain how it works instead of uh, just showing things off. It's based around manipulating the file system and path variable. Um, I'm not sure exactly what level, uh, how familiar all you guys are with uh, the various things I'm using, so I'm, I'm going to start with uh, some concepts I figure a lot of you are going to know. Um, chroot is a really neat technique that can change what the file system looks like from the point of view of program you're running. So in this example here, uh, Firefox is located in var chroot arch user bin Firefox. What I can do is I can take that var chroot arch part and make it so that from Firefox's point of view, that's not there. So if it looks for a file like GTK, uh, the GTK libraries, it's just going to prepend var chroot arch. Uh, the system is going to prepend var chroot arch every time it looks for that file. So what ends up happening is um, it, it's looking for all those libraries inside of the arch part of the system instead of uh, getting confused with other distros. <coughs> One thing I want to clear up right now before I continue is uh, a lot of people tend to confuse the with the lightweight virtualization, and it is not that for a number of reasons. Um, most notably, you can break out of a CH root if you want to, especially if you're root. Now, if you uh, if you want to have any kind of sandboxing, this is horrible. It, it will not protect you. However, if you explicitly want things to break out of the system, like I do with Bedrock, because I, I want them all to continue interacting with each other, this is really nice. If I try to use virtual machines, I, I lose that. Uh, more of it's not just software that you're interacting with, but your hardware. Anything with CH root has direct access to your hardware, just like it's running without the CH root. Where again, with virtual machines, it's not. Um, the game I showed earlier is 3D. Running that in a virtual machine, you're going you're gonna to kill your performance, whereas I don't have that issue here. Um, so yeah, it, it's not virtualization. So what I do is I just take the full file system of what other distros I'm interested in, like Debian and Arch, uh, Ubuntu, or any of the other ones I mentioned, put them on disk, and then when I want to run a file from it, I just use ch root so that that executable only sees the libraries and helper programs that it, it needs. Uh, and it doesn't have any con uh, conflicts with other ones. So for example, uh, if you've ever tried to update your, your libc libraries, that can cause problems. Things need a very specific version of that. Here, everything sees the, the version of, of libc that it needs. The other main trick I use is uh, bind mounts. Before that, I should go over just general mounts. If you have something like a CD or USB drive and you want to access it, put it in the system. Uh, on Windows, it'll show up in My Computer. In Linux, you can just put it anywhere, um, any, any directory you want. In addition to physical devices like that, it can be have uh, virtual directories like slash proc. If you rip out the hard drive, put it in a different machine, you'll see there's no actual files there for proc. It's, it's all uh, just a virtual interface to, to get access to some information from the system. Um, so those most people know about. What I found a lot of people don't know about is bind mounts. You can just take any directory and bind mount it as though it was a CD or a USB flash drive. Uh, to any other directory. It's like a shortcut or a sim link, you're familiar with those. However, this goes through ch roots. So what I can do with this is take any directory that I want shared in all those various systems uh, I have in disk and, and make it so it works transparently. So home is probably the, the most obvious example. I don't want to worry about, say, um, I'm using a web browser from one distro and I'm using a PDF reader from another. If I want to download a PDF and then open up a PDF reader, I don't have to worry about moving these around to different ch roots. I want it to all work transparently. So if you're sharing my home directory, um, when I download, it downloads the temporary directory in my home directory, and then the PDF reader can open it from there. Um, moreover, I can actually, say, run, uh, for example, Firefox from one distro, close it, and then open it in a different distro, and it still sees the same settings, because the home directory is shared uh, through bind mounts. Um, proper using, uh, by using bind mounts and ch roots, I can tweak the system so that any given program sees what it needs to when it needs to be different, but sees what it needs to when it needs to be shared and everything kind of works transparently. 
However, for all of that, you have to explicitly go to the really unusual uh, paths when you want to run it. I want it to work, just type Firefox and Firefox pop up, it shouldn't matter where. The way the system does that typically is with the path variable. So in this example here, the path variable has three directories, user local bin, user bin, and bin, as, as are very common ones. So if I try to run Firefox, what happens is the system looks into those directories to see if Firefox is there. Um, so what I can do is make a specialized path variable that also includes the directories from the other CH routes, and this can run a program, and it doesn't matter where it is, it just runs. Um, currently, the way Bedrock works is it prioritizes the native uh, executables before searching for other distros, which means that the helper programs needed for pro uh, any given program will look at the right place. However, if you don't have a program installed in one distro, it'll automatically go to the other ones. Um, so I had to make a few unusual choices for Bedrock due to its really unusual requirements. I figure it's worth going over the, uh, the logic I used going through this. Um, first of all, I don't have an installer. This is still reasonably early alpha, despite the fact that it's all working. Um, you have to maintain things at a really low level. You have to go through and hand edit uh, things like init files if you want to change them. So to make sure that everything is accessible for as many users as possible, it, it needs to be simple. I, I want this to be um, easy to maintain as, as much as I can. Um, so I, I make some unusual choices for some of the packages, like uh, Grub is probably the de facto bootloader for Linux. However, setting up Grub by hand is a huge pain. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put other people through doing that. So instead I'm using SysLinux. However, if you want to use Grub, uh, if you're familiar with that, you can go ahead and use that. It, it's reasonably transparent between what you use. Um, so Bedrock Linux development team is very small, pretty much just me. Um, I, I don't honestly propose that I am necessarily more experienced or more skilled than the people working on all the major distros that you're more familiar with, which the people at Debian and Arch know what they're doing. Um, this is, making a distro is hard. I have a lot of respect for them. So what I do is instead of trying to, uh, anything that I can get from another distro through the, the client system I have here, I do. I, um, they, they know what they're doing, let them do their job as much as I can. Uh, so Bedrock itself is extremely minimal. Uh, any feature I can get somewhere else I do. Um, so when you, when you uh, run executable, it's usually dependent on libraries on the system. If it gets these libraries at runtime, it's referred to as dynamically linked, otherwise it is statically linked if you compile it into the executable itself. Um, so if you just take a uh, executable from, from one Linux distro and drop it into another one and try to run it, it probably won't work because the libraries aren't exactly what it expects if it is dynamically linked because it has to go out there and look for them. However, if you statically link it, it's not an issue. You can grab, as long as uh, it's the same CPU architecture, uh, you're running the same operating system, things like that, it'll, it'll just work uh, when statically linked. So because Bedrock is trying to run some executables in every distro ever, it, it has to be statically linked to get around the, uh, the library issues. I want to make sure that any executable I run, um, any core one from Bedrock, uh, will run in any distro. Uh, moreover, I want to make sure that any given distro uh, can compile the core, uh, core Linux parts, the core parts of Bedrock Linux, um, and then put it into the main system to update it. Because Bedrock Linux does not come with a compiler or any kind of package manager. If you want to update it, you're doing that from a client. Um, however, note this is just for the core of Bedrock Linux. Any of the client distros can use whatever they want. They can be uh, dynamically like I expected. As a warning, a lot of people who know what they're doing, uh, specifically Red Hat, does not like static linking. Um, I have a few links there. Um, conclusion, never use static linking. I would like to think that they did not think about what Bedrock Linux is doing and that I get an exemption from that because of some usual stuff I'm doing. But use your own judgment. Um, I'm not going to try to uh, hide the fact that a lot of people do not like this. Should note there's another distro work uh, from a group called Suglis, and uh, they're, they really like static linking, and they're just going to the extreme. Everything is static. So th there is some, there's some debate on the matter. Um, so do, do your own research before jumping into it. Uh, this is... Uh, init systems in the Linux world right now are, are getting a lot of attention, uh, specifically things like system D is coming out, um, a lot of them are moving over. So what am I going to use for Bedrock? There is no good way that I can think of to have things transparently work for every single init system. I, I'm not going to be able to figure out, um, for example, uh, here, if you have multiple distros that have cups installed, I don't know which one you want to have to run a boot. I don't think there's a good way to automate that that I know of. So I'm just not going to do it. Right now with Bedrock Linux, if you're going to do anything that, that runs a boot, you have to manually set that up. 
Um, eventually, I'm, I'm going to try to tackle this with more effort to help automate that. Uh, but for the time being, I, that, that is at the bottom of the priority list. Uh, when I started this, SystemD was not around, so that, that was not kept in mind. However, it seems to be taking over everything. And I think that if I can, uh, I can work it so that SystemD, uh, anything from SystemD will launch transparently. Uh, but I've not actually started that project yet. Another uh, very important goal I had with Bedrock Linux is that it is, I missed a space on the slide, uh, that it will boot by itself without any clients and should not be dependent on you having some of the distro when you install it. Most importantly, uh, not for when you immediately install it, but for when a client breaks, because they do that. Um, I want to make sure that it'll still boot and still run fine so you can debug the situation. Because of this, Bedrock Linux is actually very resilient. Uh, I don't think that Debian or any of the rel clones are going to break on you, but if they do, you, you can just keep running things. You can grab it from the distro. The entire distro can just crash. Uh, if it's a client, it doesn't matter. Um, if you want to have a client do something at boot, like managing slash dev, I have to make sure that Bedrock will boot even if that client doesn't work. So Bedrock will do itself first, and then later it'll uh, it'll do the switch, which means that boot time is not theoretically ideal because something is, is are being repeated. However, it's still really fast. My system boots in a matter of seconds after I get to from the SysLinux menu. Um, there's only a handful of packages in the entire distro, because I said earlier, I want to keep it minimal. I figure I'll go over the logic one for each of them. A number of people are nagging me for Bedrock BSD. I don't think BSD can benefit as much, because it doesn't have the wide variety of user land that Linux does. Um, from the flip side, it's not as fragmented. Um, so I, I've not really seriously looked into that. Uh, I'm using a number of techniques that I think are end up being Linux specific. So if you want to try to port it, it might be hard. Although at the moment, those have not been implemented. So now would be the time to do it. Um, for the bootloader, I said earlier, this is the simple sign one I know to set up manually. And since people are currently going to be setting it up manually, that seems like an obvious choice. BusyBox is amazing. I absolutely love BusyBox. Uh, BusyBox is a single executable that can do anything that you would expect from a, a basic Linux user land. So my entire user land is, is BusyBox. Uh, grep, sed, awk, uh, shell, anything you want comes from BusyBox. Which means if you want to update the system, you just update one file and all of the user land gets updated. Uh, it's also designed with, to be uh, compiled statically, which as I said earlier is a requirement that I have for anything uh, in the core of Bedrock. This was an interesting find. Uh, I, I don't, I've not heard of this before I started looking out for it. I have not heard of anyone else using it. Uh, one problem with chroot is that it requires root. And it requires root for a reason. If you try to set UID it, people can do some nasty things. For example, uh, sudo looks for the etsy sudoers file. If you can use chroot to change the view of the file system and have some other file that the administrator did not intend to be sudoers, look like it's sudoers, you can abuse that very heavily. What CapTroot does is two things. First, it uses Linux capabilities instead of setUID, which allows you to, it's essentially uh, setUID with more uh, fine grain control. So if it's somehow abused, the only thing they can do is chroot. Uh, moreover, it explicitly, uh, one thing that CapTroot does, not necessarily Linux capabilities, is it limits the directories that you can chroot into, which gets around the other half of the security uh, worry about it. I might end up dropping CapTroot in the next release for my own uh, for my own thing for a number of uh, simplicity and performance reasons, but still, I owe the, the guy who made this a lot of credit. I don't remember his name. He is an Arch Linux developer. Um, he was very helpful. Um, everything else is being done through shell scripts. Since I have a busy box of shell there, it just seems natural to uh, go about it. Keeps everything nice and simple. Uh, it's very hackable. Um, a very obvious choice. So uh, Bedrock Linux comes with a number of scripts. Uh, you'll run different commands that help manage some of the things you're not uh, probably not used to from other distros. The main one is uh, BRC, uh, Bedrock uh, CHROOT. What this will do is uh, it'll let you run a command from basically from another distro. It'll make sure everything's set up in the background as it needs to be. So for example, if you want to run Firefox explicitly from Fedora, you call that command there. Um, note uh, if Firefox is not installed where you are. This will all happen transparently. But if you want to be explicit, that's how you go about it. Uh, if you don't have any arguments, it just runs a shell. So I, I just type BRC in the distro quite often. 
Um, early on, I tried to automate having it detect that a given program is not available on the system and automatically switch over. However, detecting that on the fly is slow. So instead, I have a program uh, called BRP, Bedrock Path, that'll automate setting this up for you so it all works transparently. Um, however, it takes us a few seconds to run. I need to work on performance for that. So whenever you, you go to AppGet or Pacman or Yum or whatever you want to use to add or remove package, it'd be a good idea to run this immediately afterwards. BRL will uh, run a command in every available distro that you have on disk. So for example, you want to be sure that they all see the network, you can run that command. Um, so I can run BRL that's the issue. So there's the Etsy issue in about half a dozen different files, uh, different distros, and I can run that really, really nice and easily. Uh, the core bedrock doesn't have an Etsy issue. I, I should probably make that. But you can see uh, Squeeze, uh, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch, uh, Debian, Sid, they all see what they need to see when it's unique like that. It can run a program. Um, see, I need to update, keep all these up to date, and manually running all the different commands. I when I'm switching between literally dozens of distros, I get really confused about which one is using which package manager. So this uh, abstracts it all away from me. I just run BRU and I'll update all of my uh, all my distros at the same time. I didn't check if I have wireless here, so I, I'm not going to demo this. I don't know if I have internet, but it just runs through sequentially and updates them all. Um, due to the way Bedrock is very minimal, the only shell it comes with out of the box is the uh, born shell from from uh, BusyBox. It's very, very limited. I, I don't want that shell. I'm a fan of Z shell. That's what I prefer to use. So I have to get that from uh, one of the clients. And this raises a number of issues. For one thing, what if I want to explicitly log into the BusyBox uh, born shell for debugging because something went wrong? Um, or what if uh, the CSU, all that stuff is fine, but the client breaks? Um, I've broken many, many clients in the past, and that has been an issue. So I came up with uh, two ways to fix that. One, I created a meta shell called BRSH. All it does is just run the shell that you expect if it's available, otherwise it falls back. Um, so if the client breaks and there is no ZSH on the system, it'll, it'll fall back nicely and transparently. Um, the other idea I came up with, I feel like there might be something wrong with this, so I, I'm not going to push it too hard, but maybe you know an issue. However, the way, uh, the way the Unix systems will detect what shell you want is the Etsy password file. It just tells you. Um, the way you system, systems and identify your user is by user number, not your user name. It doesn't actually care. So what you can do is you can create two different lines in your IT password file uh, with different uh, login names, but the same number. So now if I log in as root, it runs brsh as I'd expect. If I log in as br root, it just goes to a normal shell. Everything else just works. Home directory is the same, user name, uh, user number is the same, but user uh, name is the same after I log in because when it parses the file, it just looks at the first one. So it'll, you'll look like your root, everything works, the only thing is you change your shell. Uh, I don't know if people are doing that, figure that on my own, so I'm worried there's something wrong with that, which is why I made the, the BRSH thing in the first place. Um, so be careful with that until I'm more confident on it. Uh, there is a number of issues. Uh, the most notable one I've been fighting for a while is Etsy file syncing. So the way I'm sharing things like the home directory work really, really well. Um, however, if you want to share individual files, there can be issues. Uh, if you try to rename a mount point, like a, if you're mounting a CD or USB drive, uh, that causes problems. And the way I'm doing things is, is through that subsystem. So for example, if I want to share some things in slash Etsy but not others, for example, I want to share Etsy password so that my users are the same in all the clients, but I do not want to share, uh, for example, Etsy issue because that should be different in all of them, you can't rename that file. Uh, you can write to it, read to it, all that works fine. However, uh, you can't rename it. And this is an issue when you try to run commands uh, that say manipulate those files because the way they work is they create a temporary file and they rename it over. Uh, if you're familiar with that, if you've seen uh, like Etsy password with a dash or a plus after it, that's what that is. And that doesn't work. Um, I, I view hacks for that, but I have to admit that is a very serious issue with the current version of Bedrock. Um, so, where is it? Yeah, I, I'm going to try contacting people like New, uh, see why. Uh, yeah, so um, another point someone else came up with was use symlinks for this. Uh, if you read the docs for symlinks, it should manage this fine. So if Etsy password is a symlink to another file in a directory and the whole directory is being shared, it's a non-issue. However, uh, GNU's ad user and a few other programs will refuse to work if I'm using symlinks in that fashion. So I need to contact them and ask why. There's probably a good reason. Um, but beyond that, I'm, I'm close to giving up uh, anything clean. I have hacky ideas like catting the file over the other one, so you're not renaming it. You're just copying it over, that works fine, so I might try to automate that. 
Um, I'm thinking that for uh, a lot of packages like to add groups and users, it might come with a giant group file that has every group uh, entry that will be audited automatically from any distro. That will save that. Um, I, I don't think it's a good idea, though. Uh, UnionFS is, is a few options. I, I have some things to go through, but uh, th there's not been any clean answers I have for that so far. Um, when people are trying to install it, they've had some issues statically compiling BusyBox. Apparently Fedora, for example, people have some very significant issues. Um, so what I'm going to do is standardize against a, uh, the problem is glibc doesn't like static compiling, but there are other libc libraries like uh, Muscle or uclibc which are designed for it. So I'm just going to standardize against those and I think that'll fix that issue. Um, goals for a future release, uh, I want to make a package manager manager. That is not a typo. <laughs> Because there are already a ton of package managers, and I don't want to worry about which one's which. So the way I have it envisioned is you'll say package manager manager, and then install, for example, you'll install, and then specify the distro. But what if I don't care about the distro? I want Sage Mathematics from one of the repos. I don't care which. I can just say I want any. Or uh, if I want explicitly to have a the newest one, I can call that. Um, for example, when the, all the Microsoft Office new format came out, that is X at the end, I was on Debian, and OpenOffice on Debian did not uh, could not read that. So I wanted the newest uh, newest one, whatever has the most likely chance of reading it. It would be nice if I could have done this at the time. Uh, another idea I had uh, is false system jump warnings. So say you don't have Vim installed in, in the distro your, your shell is currently running in. It's only in one distro. If you try to read a file that's not being shared, you'll get the one from the distro that has Vim, which works fine for me because I've been using this for years, but I'm sure somebody is going to be confused by this. So I'd like to see if I can get to pop up a warning uh, in those situations. Currently, uh, if you want to install a distro as a client, it's a bit of work. Uh, uh, some distros have neat tricks like uh, dbootstrap, fdbootstrap, and pacman that can just install it from the system live. It just goes to the repo, downloads the packages, and sets them up. Um, in, in a directory, but uh, barring those, you usually just have to actually install the distro like normal and then copy wherever it installs into the folder you want. That's a lot of work. So what I'd like to do is um, just some standalone program that will go through and download and set them all up automatically for you. So I can say that, hey, I broke Arch horribly, please download it again. Um, <coughs> I'm American, I speak English, and everything defaults to English, so I've just not looked into locale at all. Um, however, I found that a lot of uh, people who are interested in Bedrock are, are international, uh, particularly Eastern Europe has a lot of uh, a lot of news stories I don't understand about Bedrock. Um, <laughs> so I, I need to add support for this eventually. Uh, that's, that's a goal I have on the table. Um, the upcoming release uh, called Bosco is aimed around the middle of 2013. That's quite a ways from now because I uh, I've learned a lot of things after the first public release that need to be changed. Um, don't have slides for it, but uh, the way the current system works is uh, if you're in a client uh, and you want to run a program from a different client, when you use ch root, you don't see the other clients anymore outside of them. So I'm currently doing is bind mounting those other clients into it. So every time you're in a distro and you want to go to another distro, another distro, it creates this huge tree of all the bind mounts I need. And I don't know how the tree is going to go, so I can't automate that at boot and just do them all. So I have to do it on the fly, and that takes time. Even if the client's already set up, I have to do checks to see if I need to do that. And that, that is slow. Um, in, in real world situations, I've seen that take uh, you know, over a second when I want to run a command from one distro to another. I find that unaccessible, so uh, unacceptable. So I've been putting a lot of effort in the next release uh, to fix that and get some performance benefits. One warning a lot of people have about CH roots is that you can break out of it. I've never heard of anyone actually doing that for a legitimate purpose other than hacking. But I figure this will actually do that. You break out of CH root and go back into it is my plan. And that is really, really fast. Uh, and in benchmarks, it's just all zeros on the timer with, uh, with the time command. So uh, that's my plan for the next one. However, uh, I have to be very careful about doing that because letting non-root users break out of CH roots is really scary. Um, there's also other things like an installer. Apparently, people want an installer. Uh, as opposed to just making it from scratch. <laughs> so I'm going to work on that. So it'll be a while before the next release. Um, I apologize. Uh, I'm busy as a student, I also have a job. 
If you want more information, you can go to uh, my uh, the website, bedrocklinks.org. I, I spent a lot of time on the documentation. If you look at the Git repo for the website, there's a lot of typos that have been fixed. Uh, the most uh, I've gotten a lot of patches from other people, and they've primarily been spelling mistakes that they're fixing. It's <laughs> pretty embarrassing. Um, if you like IRC, I'm in Pound Bedrock on Freenode quite often. Just pop in there and say hi, ask any questions. Uh, I'm trying to use Reddit in place of a traditional mailing list or forum. It seems really easy to use either for the very small number of users or a very large number of users. It, it scales very nicely. So I'm going to try that. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll fill back traditional mailing list and forum. Uh, if you want to track the progress, I have two Git repos set up, one for the user land itself that I'm working on, the other for the website. Um, I'm thinking of adding a third one for the installer because the installer doesn't really fit into either of those. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs> Oh, actually, okay, so um, I'm, I'm running the test stuff from the new one, so the number of mount points I have is not as absurd as it would typically be. <laughs> yeah, um, I've seen my desktop, which is running the, the previous, the, the current stable release. Um, be over a hundred thousand mount points. <laughs> so, in, in, the, in the upcoming release, it, it's not going to be absurd. It'll just be whatever it actually needs for for one level. Uh, anything else? Yes. Uh, the way you currently do it is by going to the specific disk row and running the command that lists the packages. I'm hoping the package manager manager will, will help automate that kind of thing. Uh, so for example, in Debian, there's a list of all the Debian packages. Uh, the first two lines aren't actually packages, so there's those, org new pacman. There's just uh, package and pacman. So you can use those commands to see what's listed. Uh, you have to go to the individual disk row. That's not been a problem for me, but uh, I would like to automate that, help make it a little simpler. Yes. You going to be looking for help? Uh, yes. If you'd like to contribute, uh, please do. <laughs> um, it's usually anything from just fixing up my. I, I learned HTML and CSS one web uh, one week before making that website. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> if you want, if if that's what you're good with, please help there. Um, for example, actually, I have I have it here. That that we're looking in WebKit, and that's not uh, what I want it to look like. Like that bottom line should not be going over. Um, in Firefox, that looks fine. This was originally testing it on. Um, the main ways you can go about it are on Reddit. I have a uh, one of the subreddit topic things I have in there is development discussion. Go in there. I have a list of things you can contribute to. If you have any new ideas, feel free to uh, bring them up. Either something that you can do or something you want to see. Otherwise, uh, you can just go ahead and throw a pull request at the Git repos. So that works as well. Or you can just go in uh, to the IRC room as well. Uh, no good place to discuss these things. Anything else? Yes. Uh, so what was controlling the Linux Steam? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I forgot to mention that. I bet you had it in my slide somewhere. Yeah. Um, so uh, when I saw, showed running Force Leashed, despite the, uh, the fact that it wouldn't run in Debian, that's nice. But you don't really have to because you can just get the source code and recompile it. However, if you don't have the source code, if it's a proprietary program, you can't do that. Uh, Valve is bringing Steam to Linux, if you've not heard, which I'm very excited about. However, they're primarily testing against Ubuntu. If you're on something like uh, Arch Linux with significantly newer libraries or Debian with significantly older, odds are not bad you're going to have a problem. Um, hopefully they know what they're doing. They might statically compile everything or linking its local libraries. However, if it is an issue, there's going to be two distros that support it. It's just going to be Ubuntu and then Bedrock. Um, this is, uh, as fun as games are, I've actually run into this uh, in areas where I'm being productive. I'm taking classes now which require I uh, use Altera, um, a uh, FPGA program. Um, and Altera is specifically designed, uh, it, it does support Linux, however it only lists a very small number of distros that it supports. Um, it's, it's closed source, I cannot recompile it to fix any issues. I had to explicitly use one of those distros, or Bedrock, in which case I'm using one of those distros. Um, I looked at some of the source code they had on things that were not uh, binaries, things like shell scripts, and they were, they were doing some things that very clearly expect one specific distro. For example, uh, that uh, the hash bang line in one of the scripts has been SH, 
not Bash, but they're using Bashisms. Uh, on Red Hat platforms, uh, BinSH is symlinked to Bash, so that works. However, on things like Debian, it symlinks to Dash with a D, and those Bashisms don't work. So those scripts just don't work on Debian. Uh, it's an easy fix. I think I threw a bug report at them once I caught it. Um, but an easier thing to do would just be to run it in the disro or in a client, and it, it all works fine. Uh, yes? This is all, it's really all dependent upon all these other binaries working with a particular kernel that you've got set up. In yeah, that's a, that's a good concern. Uh, there's only one kernel on the system. I can't use the CHU stuff for different kernels, which means that every single uh, client has to be supported by that kernel. So in theory, if there are two clients that have mutually exclusive requirements on the kernel, that would be a problem. However, I've never seen that. Um, there might be some feature that it expects, just include that, otherwise the specific program won't work. Um, I make my own kernel, so that, that's not been an issue for me. I'm working on getting it to where you can get kernels from the client, so you don't have to maintain your own kernel, because I know a lot of people do not want to do that. Um, but yeah, in my experience of using this for about, uh, I've been developing this for probably four or five years. I don't, I'm, I think I got the name like two or three years ago, but I've been this for a while, I've never had an issue where something expects uh, a kernel that I don't have or mutually exclusive kernel stuff. Anything else? Yes. Yeah, you'd expect this stuff to get really ugly because it's complicated. Um, it's it's not. I've uh, one worry I had was that if you're going to compile something and has multiple dependencies and it grabs them from different distros, it'd be a problem. So I think I made a command that will turn off this whole system, so you, when you run it, that doesn't happen. But I've had issues where it grabs um, dependencies from just half a dozen different distros, and it worked. Uh, I was I was completely blown away. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. The, the question was um, if when you compile a program with a system, if it, if it gets messy. And the answer is surprisingly no. I, I expected it to. Uh, if there's something I've not caught and it, it is messy, um, I'm, I have a plan to just run one command, to turn off access to other distros so that uh, it just runs against those specific libraries and doesn't try to do anything fancy with everything else. Yes? Uh, I have on the website some instructions. You probably can't see with that font. And I know for a fact the website breaks even worse if you zoom in. Um, <laughs> however, uh, a number of different distros, uh, like Debian-based ones, Fedora and Arch, will allow you to use their package manager to install to a directory. So you literally just download all the packages you need for the system and unpack them and it works. Um, so you can go do that. If the distro you have does not support that, you can uh, just reboot the system, install it like you normally install a distro, don't wipe the bedrock partition, um, and then either mount what you just installed to or just copy it over. Um, I'm hoping to help automate all of this later, so you just one command, one command saying give me x distro, um, but that's, that's still quite a ways away. All right, I, I think that's it. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to find me uh, in the halls. I'll probably be here all day. Um, I'm the guy wearing the Bedrock Linux shirt. Um, if, if you don't see me here, if you have ideas for questions later, do not hesitate to contact me um, uh, on the website, IRC, Reddit, uh, email, find me some other way, that's fine. I'm, I'm very eager to discuss this. Uh, constructive criticism is good. If I've done something really stupid, let me know. <laughs> Uh, however, I've not had an issue with that. The, the worst people who accuse me of is being crazy. I think uh, the LWN article on me, I have a lot of respect for them. And they said, uh, what is open source for if not for running with crazy ideas when uh, talking about my, my project? Uh, so yes, thank you. <laughs>